Hey folks, how's it going? This is Mr. Murray coming to you with a do now for course two honors for Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. Uh, what you're going to notice is that my calculator is gone. And that's because unfortunately my trial period has run out. Uh, unlike other applications like Zoom that are, you know, being very lenient and actually offering more trial versions for people given the COVID-19 crisis. Unfortunately, Texas Instruments is not that generous, sad to say. So um, at least until I can get some kind of simulation software, you're, you might hear me typing stuff in to my calculator, um, but there's not going to be an on-screen calculator visible. Um, and so we're going to have to try to do our best to work around that. I'll essentially just write what I would be putting into my calculator and then show you the answer. If there's ever anything we need to do with a calculator, I'll try to put some visuals up there to, to show you how to do that. Um, at least again, until I can find uh, a working calculator simulation software. Okay, so here's our problem. So we've got two problems and these actually come from the MyHRW homeworks. They, they might be different numbers than what you have, but I thought that I would talk about them because there's some interesting problems that have to do with circumference and area. Now we remember that area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Notice that we're using 3.14 per pi. Okay, and then circumference could either be 2 times pi times r or 2 times r times pi or pi times the diameter because 2 times the radius is the same as the diameter. Okay, so these are the two, these are two problems. So the first as a circle with an 8 inch diameter is stamped out of a rectangular piece of metal as shown. Find the area of the remaining piece of metal using 3.14 for pi and rounding to two decimal places. The second problem is a graphic artist created a company logo from two tangent circles and that just means they're touching at that one point whose diameters are in the ratio 8 to 7. What percent of the total logo is the area of the region outside the smaller circle round to the nearest tenth okay so um, what I want you to do I'll just separate these what I want you to do I want you to pause the video I want you to try to solve these problems okay and then when you're ready unpause and you'll see what I got okay so if you've already done these problems in the homework, great for you. These are just maybe a, another chance to do them with other numbers. But if you haven't done this homework assignment yet, this might be a good opportunity to see me work through an example step by step. I know like the online my.hrw.com does have step by step work solutions, but I thought maybe having a video of me doing it might be helpful as well. So if we take a look at the first problem, remember from trig, what I've really been trying to emphasize is having a good problem solving process. So the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the important information. We have an eight inch diameter. Okay. So what that means is that it goes through the center. Okay. And the total is eight inches. And I want to know the remaining piece of metal, which means this, like uh, purpley blue whatever you call this color outside of this circle so to do that the first thing I need to do is I need to find the total area I'm gonna find everything so that because we're working with a rectangle presumably is 16 by 10 which is 160 and in this case we're gonna use inches squared okay that's the easier part the hard part is doing the circle so the first thing we got to remember is that we're given the diameter and what we need based on the formula here is the radius and the radius is 4 so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna do pi r squared so we're gonna do pi times 4 squared and that's about if we use the numbers that were asked you from the problem we're gonna use 3.14 times 16 and now I'm gonna come onto my calculator 1 4 times 16 on my calculator, I get 50.24. Okay, and again, presumably that is also inches squared. So to get the remainder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire area of the whole rectangle and I'm going to subtract out 50.24 
and that represents the area of the inner circle. So now my calculator, I'm going to do 160 minus 50.24, and you could use Google Calculator, Desmos, or Wolfram Alpha if you don't have a graphing calc at home. Or you could even use a scientific calculator. Um, a, gra a graphing calculator is not really necessary here. As long as you have a calculator that can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, which is basically any calculator. Okay, and what I get here is I get 109.76. Sorry about that. 109.76. Let me just do that in a separate color. Inches squared, and they want me to round to two decimal places. So that's what I report 109.76 inches squared. All right, and if need be, please understand so you may rewind rather so you make sure you understand that. All right, going to the second one. This one's a little bit tricky. So the tangent doesn't, the only reason they use the word tangent is a tangent, that just means that they're just going to touch in this one point. Now that's important because if they didn't, it would be trickier to find the area of the stuff that's outside. But this is essentially the exact same problem that I just did above, except that instead of taking a square area and subtracting a circle area, I'm taking a circle area and subtracting a circle area. Okay, so I know the diameters are in a ratio of eight to seven. And so what that means is, let's say that this was seven X. Like if this was, if I had some unit, like unit X, and this was seven X, well then the whole thing here would be 8x because the ratio of the big diameter to the small diameter is 8x. And again, I'm using x just to be a little bit more general because we don't really know what the units are. But but if you think about it, if the diameter of the inner was 7, the diameter of the outer was 8. If the diameter of the inner was 14, right? Then the top would have to be 16, right? Cuz 16 to 14 is 8 to 7. I'm just trying to be general here. So now I've got to think about the area here. So if I want to get the area, well, first of all, if the diameter is 8x, the radius is 4x, right? Because the radius is half the uh, diameter. If I got 7x, then that radius is 3.5x, OK? So basically, what I'm going to do is this. First of all, I need to know the percent of the total logo. And the total logo is the big circle, right? Because this is the total logo. And then in the middle, we've got that little piece of logo. OK. All right. So I'm going to start with here. And I'm going to do this, right? The area would mean pi times, and we need to round to the nearest tenth, pi times 4x squared. All right. And what that means is that's equal to about 3.14 and 4x squared. Well, that's 16x squared. Okay. So I'm going to do on my calculator 3.14 times 16. Okay. And you might have known if you look up here, we've kind of done that. So that's 50.24x squared. That's the big circle unit. That's the big circle area. Okay? The units don't really matter. If you want to do unit squared, you can. So similarly, if I want to get the inner area, I'm going to do pi times 3.5x squared, which is equal to about 3.14 times and now I'm going to have to do 3.5 squared on my calculator. And when I do that, I get, if you knew this in your head, good job, 12.25x squared. And now I take 12.25 and multiply that by 3.14. And I get 38.465x squared units, square units. Right, so now if I want to know the orange, right, I'm going to do this in orange. Let me get a little orange because that represents what's left. Well, I'm going to take 50.24x squared and I'm going to subtract 
x squared. Okay, and don't worry about the x squared because you're going to see they don't really matter. So I'm going to do 50.24. I'm going to minus 38.465. And I get 11.775 x squared, right? And we can combine them because they both have the x squareds. Now, that represents the orange, and it wants to know what percent of the total logo, that is, what percent of the 50.24, is this. So I'm going to do 11.775, and I'm going to divide it by 50.24, okay? Because that will give me the x squared, because that will give me the percent of the total that is the outer. And you can see that the x squareds will cancel showing you that the X's themselves don't really matter. And if you just set this up as seven to eight, you'd get the same answer as you can see. I'm just, again, trying to generalize. So I'm gonna take 11.775, I'm gonna divide by 50.24, and what I get is 0 0.234. They want a percent, so I convert that to a percent, and I'm gonna do 234, three, I convert that to a percent and round to the nearest tenth, it's 23.4%, okay? Now, figures aren't really drawn to scale, but if you look at this, right, if you look at that orange piece surrounding the yellow piece, right, what you see is, well, to me, it looks like a little bit less than a quarter of the total figure, right? Because that, that looks like that yellow circle on the inside takes up about three quarters of the figure. These are the last two problems in the problem set and they're kind of extension problems. But in this first assignment, what we're focused on, okay, is we're focused on two things, area and circumference, okay? Once we get really established in these fundamentals, we're gonna start talking about what I call sector area. So like if you add a pie and you took a slice out of the pie, how much would you have, right? And arc length, which represents just a piece of the circumference rather than the whole circumference. So hopefully you were able to get these right. Best of luck on today's problem set. Please make sure you get it finished. Feel free to ask me any questions at any time, but keep your head up. Best of luck. And, I re and remember, you can do it. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.